so badly that we ended up calling the non-emergency line and having an officer come check around the house. Now, of course, by the time they got here, they were already gone. Honestly, the most likely scenario was that it was just a person experiencing homelessness and potentially a mental illness of some sort. But the thought of a person taking advantage of the porch light being out and lying in wait for one of us to cross the porch was enough to have us avoid being out after dark until we moved out.
next story was sent to me by the same Redditor who gave us the Good Samaritan story a few weeks ago. Like, it, it was a solid while ago. Um, but she is now a subscriber and she sent me another one of her encounters. So this is Callie's story. And it is called Sleepwalking Horror. I have always had vivid dreams, even as a child. I remember when I was seven years old, I had a dream that a man was watching me through a window and I could hear him trying to unlock the door. I ran back to my parents' closet and I could hear him approaching and then I woke up, just stuff like that. Everybody has nightmares sometimes, but mine just seemed to be next level. After I had a child, I was 23, things started getting worse. I guess it was just this anxiety and stress that manifested itself in my dreams. It progressed into sleepwalking and I started acting out my dreams. I went on a weekend trip with my boyfriend. My parents kept my little girl, so it was me, him, and another couple. Now we stayed at this very nice hotel. We went and we had a few drinks. I was kind of nervous about sharing a room with the other couple because I know when I stay at unfamiliar places, I'm likely to have some kind of sleep terror or sleepwalk. Now, that night, we all went to sleep. Sometime in the night, I found myself standing in this large room. Now, to me, it looked like a suite or something. I looked around, and it was like I was watching an old movie. Sort of hazy, not scary. I walked around, and I didn't see anyone in the bed. Now, I saw that the door was kind of half open, and then it slowly started to open more. I saw a large man standing in the door, and he was staring at me. He was nicely dressed, and we just kind of stared at each other for a minute or two. Now, I was beyond terrified, but my aggression kicked in, and I said, Who are you? Get out of my room. He then replied with, What's your name? Now I was even more terrified. I didn't respond and he started walking closer and he shut the door behind him. Also, you guys, meanwhile it started raining, so I hope this is kind of relaxing and not bothering to you at all. Now at this point, I'm just as confused as I am scared. I guess... My brain started waking up and suddenly I realized that this room was totally unfamiliar. This is not my room, I thought. Now the horror of realizing that I was in the wrong room. It was the middle of the night. I was out of town. I had slept walked into another room at the hotel. That was just as horrifying as the fact that I'm now in danger. The man was walking towards me and he stops about a foot away from me and says, what's your name again? I say, I'm sorry, I think I've made a mistake. This is the wrong room. Now he's standing between me and the door. He's just staring at me with an aggressive look. He says, uh, well, let me walk you to your room then with the creepiest stare, and then he slowly smiled, this maniacal half-smile, with zero emotion in his eyes. I, of course, tell him no, I can walk by myself. I dash for the door, and I open it. He's walking towards me from behind. My heart is beating so fast that I can feel it in my ears, throbbing. I swing the door open and run at full speed out of it. He is picking up his pace and is following down the hall. I 
see the elevator and I start sprinting. As soon as the light dinged to open the doors, I run inside and hit the button to close the doors as quickly as possible. I see him round the corner, right as the doors are starting to close. He's clearly angry, but he's not saying anything. I guess he didn't want to cause a scene and chance waking up other guests. I'm so panicked at this point, I can't remember my room number. I'm crying, trying desperately to remember, and suddenly, I remember it. I knew the elevator at the hotel had one of those screens by the elevator, so you could see what floor I was stopped on. He was going to know the floor I stopped at. I knew I couldn't chance going to the wrong floor to throw him off, because I would just waste time. I don't know why I didn't go to the lobby. I was too panicked to think rationally. Now, the doors open to my floor. I sprint to the door of my room and I bang on the door. My boyfriend opens it and he's so confused. I tell him, let me in now. But he's kind of sleepy and drunk. The other couple didn't even wake up briefly to say, are you okay? I'm embarrassed, I'm horrified, I'm crying, all kinds of emotions going on in my head. And as soon as the room is quiet, I was laying in bed, trying to cry quietly so that I wouldn't wake anyone up. While I was lying there, I could hear the ding of the elevator. He's out there, walking around, trying to find me. Eventually, I hear it ding again as if he's headed back to another floor or maybe back to his room. Now the next morning, I wasn't so sure whether I had just been dreaming whether this had actually happened. I wasn't sure whether it was one of those vivid dreams that didn't happen, but felt more like a memory than a dream. I was replaying the hazy memory of being in the room over and over again in my head. I felt like I was going insane. I was quiet, my head spinning, my face hot. I was terrified. If it was real, then I would be absolutely horrified for my safety at night for the rest of my life. I decided that if it was real, my boyfriend didn't need to know. Who would want to be with a girl who did something to that level of extreme during the night on a weekend trip with his friends? I felt embarrassed, but mostly panicked. I decided I wouldn't say a word about anything. Badly, it was my way of figuring out if it had even happened at all. If no one brought it up, it probably didn't happen. It was so bizarre and so beyond scary that my brain was literally trying to protect me. It was easier to say, that's crazy, you know, so unlikely, and probably didn't even happen. What are the chances of this being real. Now the morning was somewhat normal. We all slept in and me and the other girl on the trip didn't know each other very well but we bonded while doing our makeup before the day. Now while we were doing this she looked at me and she said, so what happened to you last night? My heart just stopped beating for a moment. I realized that that it was my worst fear. It was real. I said, what do you mean? She said, yeah, when you came and you were pounding on the door for us to let you in, I kind of laughed it off and tried to act nonchalant. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing, but I guess I had gotten up to use the bathroom and I went out the wrong door because I was sleepy, so I just had to knock to be let back in. She laughed and said, oh my gosh, I've done that before, it's so awkward. My boyfriend didn't bring it up the whole trip, but on the way home, he said, wait, I forgot to ask you, why did you need to be let back in in the middle of the night? What happened? I, I fed him the same story. I never told my boyfriend what happened. I felt psychotic. I called a therapist the next day. Now I still sleepwalk sometimes. It's crazy how your mind can involuntarily make you do something like that. It's like it's you, but it's not you. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like you're
your subconscious brain at night. Most people's muscles freeze so they can't act out their dreams, but not me. I don't know who that man was. I don't know how I got into his room, if that was even his room. I don't know what would have happened. I knew he was going to do something to me. I've been terrified every time I go out of town since then. I never saw this man again, obviously, but it goes to show how dangerous your own mind can be. Somehow my dream had innocently put me in a situation to encounter the wrong person at the wrong time. I still don't trust myself at night, but maybe my subconsciousness was traumatized enough from that that it learned a lesson. episode we have another story about a creepy man because what else i mean and this was originally posted by a reddit user called bewildering gale chips and their story is called creepy man from my hometown by the way this is not me saying that all men are creepy not at all not at all just saying 
see a lot of creepy men on this channel. All I'm saying. You know I love you all. Now, I'm an 18 year old female and I just left school and my hometown early this year. This is quite a long story but I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Last year I came across a really creepy dude. I first saw this guy walking home from school one day and he was standing out in front of his gate. He stopped me to talk to me and the first thing he said was, you're tall so do you model? I mean, can I just come in here and say that I absolutely hate it when people immediately comment on appearances like it is just absolutely just buff. Now I thought this was a creepy thing to say for a 60 year old man to a 17 year old in school uniform. It got worse from there and he told me how beautiful he thinks blonde women are. Of course, I'm blonde. He said these things while staring at me intensely. I was so uncomfortable and had to get out of there, so I told him that my dad was waiting for me at home and I had to go, and I walked away as soon as possible. This house was right at the turn off to my street, and he could see my house from his driveway. As I walked to my house and opened the front door, he was watching from his driveway the entire time. Okay, that is worrying. Now a few days later, I was walking home again and I got halfway down the road and I saw him standing at his gate again. I immediately thought, nope, and I turned around. I took a different route down another street and walked across a field to get home and completely avoid him. I walked home that way for the rest of the year. Now by the end of the year, after finishing high school, I started working at a cafe over the summer in the main street of my town. I had completely forgotten about the gate man until one day he walked in. Of course he did. He recognized me straight away and asked me what my name was. I told him a name, kind of similar sounding to my real name, because I didn't want him to know my real name. He told me, now that I know you work here, I'm going to come in way more often, smirking at me. And boy, he did. He came in almost every single day I worked. He would sit directly across from the counter and he would just stare at me. He knew I noticed and it didn't bother him in the slightest, he just kept staring. Now one morning he told me that he was going across the road to the bank to get money out to tip me. Now I didn't want to talk to him, so once he had gone I went out the back to mop in the chiller and I closed the door. I stayed out there for about 20 minutes and then when I came out and I opened the door again, he was standing right behind it, staring at me. I don't know how long he had been standing there, waiting for me to come out. I started seeing him around town a lot, and I got paranoid that he was following me. I was so creeped out and uncomfortable at this point, so I told my manager, who just laughed and she thought it was funny. She never did anything about it. He started coming in when I wasn't working and asking where I was. My co-workers would just say, she's not working today and we don't know where she is. He eventually worked out my real name. I told my dad and my boyfriend about it and they told me if he comes in again to ring them. I made sure to look at his name when I scanned his vaccination pass in case anything happened. He came in again the next day. And he said to me, I think it's really cool that you're going to blank beauty school and moving to blank city next year. I'll be sad to see you go. The creepy fucking thing about this is that I never told him that I was going there and I never would. I asked my co-workers if they told him and they all swear that they didn't and I believe them. I don't know how he found that out. Now, looking back on this, I probably should have gone to the cops, but I was worried I didn't have enough evidence and they wouldn't believe me anyways. I'm safe now and I've moved away, but I'm so glad not 
you